Hey, what's happening? How's everyone doing? Yeah, I'm looking at you right there in the camera, looking on. How's how's your day going? Hope it's going well. No crazy intros today. We're gonna kind of keep it pretty simple. We got some things coming, some crazy intros you're gonna have to deal with in the, the coming days. I'm just gonna hint that out. It's gonna be very interesting. That is my hint right there. But uh, hopefully I can get you. Hopefully, uh, you know, with Halloween coming up, we're gonna try to be a little scary and do what we can there. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna try to get you. I wanna get you. So hopefully I can. But with that being said today, we're gonna be coming out with the game picks and going over those. And hopefully we knew better than we did last week. Jeez Louise. I knew we were coming down to earth at some point, but five and eight last week, ooh boy. And I'll go ahead and show the records here. Five and eight, real, real brutal. Ooh, we were doing so well too, man. That's what's unfortunate. Having really, really good weeks, at least 11 wins each week until week seven obliteration. Gosh, dang it, man. But it is what it is. Let's go and get into the game picks now. We're not going to waste any more time. We're going to start off with the Monday, or the, sorry, the Thursday night football game. Green Bay versus Arizona. I think Green Bay is going to get it done. I'm going with my gut this time because as I was saying last week, I went against my gut on, on the Giants pick and then also the Denver and Cleveland pick and both ended up shooting me in the leg. This week, I went with my first instinct, my first gut. This is what I believe. So I'm going with Green Bay. I'm sticking with it. Even with Devontae Adams potentially not playing in COVID. Same with thing with Alan Lazard. They're going to find a way. I think, you know, even Aaron Rodgers is not just a one read receiver. He can find other receivers. I think they'll be able to schematically do okay in that secondary with Arizona and, and the way they're going to match up. I think they'll be okay. I think they're going to run the ball quite heavily. I think Aaron Jones can have a monster game. And I think Green Bay will do just enough to beat Arizona here and knock them off from being the unbeaten team that they are. So I'm going with going with Green Bay 27-24 to 24 here. On to the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons. I think Sam Darnold will be able to get it done this week. First, the Atlanta Falcons secondary. I think DJ Moore is going to have a really, really big week. So we're going with it. DJ Moore. So all you fantasy owners for looking for DJ Moore, I think he's going to have a really, really solid week here. Um, let's see. What else with this team? The defense, I think, will be able to hold up and do a good enough job, too. I think Brian Burns can have a big game here in this one versus Atlanta Falcons offensive line. Uh, you know, because he's probably going to be going up against Caleb McGarry a good chunk of the game. They'll probably rotate him in and out between him and, of course, on that left side with Jake Matthews. I'm going with Carolina, though. I think they'll bounce back here. A lot uh, going on with Sam Darnold, but I think he'll come out with a little bit of grit. He's done that in his past, even with the Jets. So I think that they'll be able to get the job done here. First, the Atlanta Falcons. On to the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. And real quick, I want to talk about the Deshaun Watson situation because it definitely looks like the deal is going to get done. I mean, we're getting like, what, five? I don't even have a watch. Why am I looking at my wrist? I don't have a watch. But uh, we have like, what, five days or something like that until the trade deadline. Isn't it on the 2nd of November? I think it's on the 2nd of November. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. And I, ultimately, do I think it's a good move for the Dolphins to give up they're probably going to have to give up, what, three first-rounders and then, you know, maybe a player or two like Christian Wilkins or, I don't know, I'm throwing that out there, but they're probably going to have to give up a player or two, a young player. I don't, I think it's an okay deal for the Miami Dolphins. I think their defense is good enough to win. They've got some playmakers. The offensive line is still going to be a big, big concern, and they're going to have to address that this offseason, probably, probably with cap situation and their draft picks that they're going to still hopefully have, some decent ones. We'll see how much draft capital they have remaining after this trade. But I think it's going to be a good move for the Miami Dolphins and Houston. They have to make the move. So it's like they need to get as much draft capital and compensation as possible to rebuild that team. So it is kind of a win-win. Not to mention, Miami is a perfect spot for Deshaun Watson. You got the most massage parlors and probably of all... <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I had to throw it out there, but they probably do have the most massage parlors. Thank you about it. Miami's got everything. But I'm going, going back to the game. I'm going Buffalo. I do think it might be closer than people think. So I'm going with Buffalo here, 31 to 27. I think Josh Allen's just going to be too much. Even with a good secondary, it's going to be a good game, though. Division games are typically pretty dang close. Don't be surprised if Tua comes out here and is not going to lay an egg either. On to our next game, and we're going with the San Francisco 49ers and the, the Chicago Bears. Big thing is, can they get Justin Fields on the move a little bit more? That's where he's been a lot more comfortable because standing back there in the pocket, the pressure and whatnot has not been good for this team. They've been able to run the ball really well. Khalil Herbert has been like really, really good. And as a runner, as a pure runner, even without David Montgomery, like they've got a really, really good formidable running back there with Khalil Herbert. They've been really, really impressed with his play so far this season. What I've seen from him out of Virginia Tech. Shout out Hokies. Let's go. I love Virginia Tech. 
And uh, yeah, I, I think that they're in no worry there. And I think they will be able to run a little bit versus 49er defense, especially if they ran against Tampa. But now run defense is a little bit, you know, uh, harem squaring from week to week. But ultimately, I think San Francisco is going to be too much for the Chicago Bear team. I just don't think they're going to be able to score enough points. And Jimmy G coming off that loss there, I think as they get a little bit more healthy, they still need George Kittle back. They really need George Kittle. I think this offense really needs him a lot, but I think they'll have enough firepower. Elijah Mitchell looked really good. Debo's still been playing pretty solid too. He's playing good. Let's go on to his next one though, Pittsburgh and Cleveland. I'm going Pittsburgh over Cleveland. I think Case Keenum, if he's starting, now if Baker's playing, then I would say that I would be a tougher one. I'm still going to go with Pittsburgh nonetheless, but I think Case Keenum's going to play in this one. Ultimately, I think Pittsburgh's defense is just going to be too much for Case Keenum. I think he's going to struggle with pressure and what Pittsburgh's going to be able to do that Baltimore, sorry, uh, the, the Denver Broncos weren't able to do last week and get pressure on him. I think that's going to make the biggest difference here. And I know Cleveland's still going to run the ball, but I think Pittsburgh's going to be able to do a good enough job stopping it within reason, even if Nick Chubb is back, which I think he's going to be. But Deioner Johnson, uh, either way, is, is a solid running back there too. On to Philadelphia and Detroit, the Lions. Uh, are they going to get their first win? I hope so, man. I really do. I'd love to see them win, but uh, I'm going with Philly. I think Philadelphia is uh, is going to be able to get the job done here, even with Miles Sanders. They don't really utilize the running backs anyway in terms of running. They seem to just throw the ball. Jalen Hurts is their leading rusher, basically, it seems like, each week. Uh, Kenny Gainwell, though, will be just fine. And then you got Boston Scott, too. Might be, their, might be the dude who they actually hand the ball off to more. Uh, Kenny Gainwell should probably be more used in the uh, receiving role. Ultimately, I'm going Philadelphia. Just, I don't know. This is a gut feeling again. I don't know. I, f- I hope Detroit does kind of pull this one out. Maybe I hope I am wrong. I'd love to see Jared Goff and Dan Campbell get a win for Detroit. I think DeAndre Swift is going to be a big part of this one. Same thing with Jamal Williams. I think they're run- going to run the ball pretty heavily here versus this team. But ultimately, going with Philadelphia didn't really make any sense at all because I didn't really give any explanations of why I think Philadelphia is going to win. But yeah, it doesn't really help at all, does it? On to the Rams and the Houston Texans. I'm going with the Rams. We're moving on. <laughs> yeah, we're moving. Oops, I'm skipping skipping ahead a little bit too far. You probably saw that. You don't, don't look. Hopefully you didn't look. Hopefully you didn't see nothing there. I mean, it's a game. It's Cincinnati, the Jets. You probably know who I'm going with. But well, we'll talk about that in a second. Tennessee, Indianapolis. I'm going Tennessee. I know Indy has been hot lately, and their offensive line's gotten healthy Carson Wentz has looked better and better. He's gotten stronger as the year's gone along. Michael Pittman's turned into this team's number one receiver. So those things have been really big. I think Tennessee, though, will be able to hold up enough. And uh, Indianapolis, while they do a decent enough job stopping the run, I think Derrick Henry is, uh, you know, I think he's going to have a bigger game than he did last week. And even if he doesn't, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones. Julio, if he can continue to stay healthy and add that extra element here to the Indianapolis Colts, could have a big game in this zone coverage team. He's really, really good against zone. I think A.J. Brown's really good against zone too. But uh, A.J. Brown, I feel like, is better versus man coverage uh, and whatnot than Julio is right now at this point in their career. Whereas Julio, I think, is better in zone coverage than A.J. is right now. I would say, I don't know. That's my opinion. Even though hey, they're so good. They're both number one receivers. I, I'm going Tennessee. I think they just got too much firepower. And I think with a lot of people thinking the Colts might win, I'm going with Tennessee. I'm trying to use reverse psychology or reverse, reverse psychology. I don't know. On to Cincinnati and the New York Jets. I think this one's going to be closer than people think. The Jets always play Cincinnati very, very well, at least in history. And I think they'll play them well coming off a really, really tough loss. Ultimately, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets actually win this week. Even with Joe Flacco, the Super Bowl winning quarterback. I got, a, I got a text message on my phone and I was like looking at this and it was crazy. I'm like, former Super Bowl quarterback returns to the Jets. I'm like, Joe Namath is coming back? What? <laughs> yeah, no, it caught me off guard a little bit. But hey, we need Joe. We, need, we might need Joe. We got Joe Flacco. We'll see how things go. Hey, Joe Flacco played well. He, he did play well when he had to come into the Jets in his first situation there. What was it versus Denver? So don't be surprised if the Jets actually did pull out a win here. I really wouldn't be surprised. But I'm going with Cincinnati. Jamar Chase has been balling out. I think T. Higgins will have a bigger game, though, this week than uh, Jamar Chase. However, Jamar Chase is unbelievable. I'm going with Cincinnati. New England, LAC, Chargers. I'm going with New Orleans, New England. Uh, I know Justin Herbert last year probably has a little bit of chip, a little bit something extra after Bill Belichick and what he did last year. Really, was the only team was that was able to slow him down. However, I still think New England is going to be able to scheme accordingly and get the job done. 
Mac Jones has been playing really, really well and, and whatnot. And this run game is going to be able to thrive versus LAC. I just don't think they're going to be able to stop them. With their linebacking situation getting a little bit banged up right now, too, with Murray, I think New is going to be able to run the ball well. So expect a big, big run game from Damian Harris. And ultimately, I think they'll have a just enough in that receiver. You know, I don't know if it's going to be Mac Jones' biggest game, but I think they'll be able to put up enough to get the job done versus LAC. So I'm going with New England in LAC. This was a really, really tough one for me. This was a really, really tough one. I wouldn't be surprised either way. LA coming off that, that bye week, that tough loss too. I think they got a little bit of extra grit there. So I'm going with New England though. I don't know. I'm just going with New England. On to the Jags and Seattle. I'm going with Jacksonville. I'm going with Jacksonville. I'm going with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Geno Smith, I know he's not been playing terrible or nothing, but I think Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence is, I think he could take that next edge here. At least I'm hoping he does. So we need to see it with something with these rookie quarterbacks, man. It's been a crapshoot, but I'm going with Trevor Lawrence. I'm going with this team to have enough to get the job done versus Seattle defense, which has been playing decent. They've been playing pretty good. They, they, uh, they just couldn't hold Kamara this past week. And I think that was their biggest mistake. They really needed to kind of avoid in on him a little bit more. But they weren't quite able to do that, even though New Orleans receivers are dropping balls like crazy. But I'm going with Jacksonville mainly because I think they're going to be able to run the ball enough. And then Trevor Lawrence can make enough plays here. And then also, I think the Jags defense is going to play well versus the Seattle team. I don't know. Just a gut feeling on this one. I think even with DK Metcalf, I know it's going to be tough. But I don't know. I'm just going with the Jaguars. I think they're going to be able to do enough to get it done. And I think they can get it done in a big way. Washington football team versus Denver Broncos versus the Denver Broncos. I'm going with Denver here to rebound over the Washington football team. Even though both teams are kind of looking for a rebound here. I think Denver will be able to have more of a pass rush than they did. Bring in Steven Weatherly. I think he's going to have a big game and a big impact for this team. And they're going to be able to do enough to stop out, you know, Terry McLaurin and the weapons that they have. I think they'll be able to, to scheme well enough to stop him. And then, you know, a run game, I think that will be kind of the key for Washington, too, is can Antonio Gibson get going, get rolling? They're going to need him, too, versus Denver front. But I just don't know if they're going to be able to run well enough. I think Denver is going to come out, and Teddy Bridgewater is going to have a better game, too, here. Now, I don't know if Jerry Judy coming back yet. I know they've been kind of a little questionable there. That'll be something. But that would be a big boost, too, if Terry, or if Scary, not Scary Terry, but if Jerry Judy comes back as well. They need him. On to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. This is always a tough one. Sean Payton and Tom Brady go at each other. It's always a good game. I'm going with Tampa Bay, though, mainly because I just think there's too much firepower. Paulson Debo's not played bad or nothing. He's had his rookie learning mistakes, but I think that just too many weapons, then New Orleans not going to be able to really stop them, even if they do play a good amount of zone. I just don't think they're going to be able to, uh, you know, get going and be able to stop them enough. And whether they have enough firepower, the Buccaneers, their secondary is starting to get a little bit healthier. They still need Sean Murphy bunting back, I think. But they got enough out here. Ross Cockrell is going to be fine for them. Um, so I'm going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I just think that New Orleans is not going to have enough firepower. Finally, we're getting into the night games. And we're going to start off with a Sunday night football game. I'm going with the Minnesota Vikings here over at the Dallas Cowboys. Again, this was just a gut decision. I love Kirk Cousins, man. Captain Kirk. A lot of people talk about him on those night games and the primetime games, but he's shown up, man. He's shown up lately, and he has been really Captain Kirk. I mean, has been clutch over these past few weeks, and he's been one of the reasons why Loki that this team is winning, and I think he's been a top 10 quarterback this year, and I think he's been a top 10 quarterback over the past couple of years. He's really good, and yeah, you know, he makes these terrible throws at times, but other than that, man, he's been a really, really good quarterback, and I'm rooting for him. I love, you know, Michigan State pride, of course out here. I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for Minnesota, even though Dallas has so much firepower. Dak Prescott's going to be fine. I think he's going to play and play at a high level. They're probably, I, I think Dallas is probably going to win the game, but I'm going with God here in Minnesota. I think they're going to have enough. They're going to be able to run the ball enough with Dalvin Cook and then utilize Justin Jefferson too there. That's going to be a great matchup too. Justin Jefferson versus Trevon Diggs. I mean, I'm really going to be looking at that one, see how Diggs does against Justin Jefferson. Giants and Kansas City to wrap it all up here. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to have enough here to get it done. In Arrowhead, the defense, I, I think, will get better as the season goes along. I do. I think they'll get better. They might be a team, too, looking at trade deadline sort of thing, trying to improve that defense. I could definitely see them making a move or two, whether it's in the secondary or whether it's on that defensive line, which if I had to guess, they're probably going to try to make a move on that defensive line, maybe add another pass rusher or, or interior defensive lineman. I don't know. Let's we'll see what they can do. But 
And for this game versus the Giants, I think they'll be able to get the job done. Uh, oh, Melvin Ingram could be a really interesting trade de destination for the Kansas City Chiefs. Watch out for him potentially being a trade candidate for the Chiefs. So anyway, we're talking trade deadline stuff, but it's always interesting, man. I think that you're going to see some interesting stuff here. Marlon Mack, I know, is being on the trade block right now. Uh, they could, I don't think they'll make a move at running back. I think Daryl Williams is just fine. So that's going to round it out here for the picks this week. Uh, let me know any uh, any guys you got going on here and uh, any spooky things. But like I said, we'll try to keep it spooky. I got some things. I'm Like I said, I'm going to try to scare you over these coming days. So we'll see if I can get you. But I uh, uh, hope you have a, her a good rest of your day and enjoy Thursday night football game tomorrow. Looking forward to that. But I'll be back tomorrow and uh, rep. And uh, sorry, like I said, I've been uh, not posting over this past couple of days. It's just been really uh, trying to do as much scouting as possible. I'm trying to get like familiar with the day two and day three prospects like a lot. I'm trying to scout these guys, you know, like more than just one game and whatnot because there's a lot of players and I feel like there's a lot more players than there were last year in the last year's class. So I'm trying to dive into some of these guys, you know, that aren't necessarily familiar names just yet, you know, which it, it takes some time for sure. But uh, overall, no excuses. Hey, I hope everyone has a really good day and uh, enjoy your day. My name's G Sling. I'm doing my thing and uh, hope you will enjoy your day. I'll talk to you later.